take you to? How are you? So what we're going to do now is we're going to play um, a Nutcracker quiz. And I'm going to send you the link for this if you want to play it on your own. We'll do it one time together, and then if you want to do it on your own, cool. Now one thing in this quiz, they're going to ask about divertisements. This word right here. Okay. This is how it sounds. Divertisement. Divertisement. And a divertisement is a short dance in a ballet. So do you remember the divertisements in the Nutcracker? When Clara and the prince went to the land of sweets? Do you remember the chocolate dance? The chocolate Spanish dance? That was one divertisement. And then the coffee Arabian dance. And then the next divertisement was the Chinese tea dance. And then the next one was the Russian candy cane dance, the tray pack. And then they had the dance of the toy flutes. I don't really remember the last two or the clown dance, but I do remember the chocolate Spanish dance and the Arabian coffee dance and the Chinese tea dance and the Russian tray pack dance. Okay? So when, it, when they talk about in this quiz, what's a divertisement? Now we know. Sound good? Say yes. Okay, let's get into this thing. All right, we're going to go through it together, and this is the link I sent you. Um, it's free. All you might have to do is just say, uh, this is my email address or something like that, but it's all free. Okay, so we're going to play this quiz. Are you nervous? Mm-hmm, <laughs> me too. All right, here we go. True or false, in Act 1 of the Nutcracker, Clara experiences her house and toys growing around you. Do you remember when she fell asleep after the party and everything started growing? We're going to say true. Yes. Nailed it. All right, question two. In what act... One scene would you see the King Mouse and the Nutcracker fighting? The Land of Snow? Did they fight in the party scene? Did they fight in the Land of Sweets? Or did they fight in the battle scene? Battle scene. Makes sense, right? You fight in a battle scene? True or false? In Act 2 of the Nutcracker, there's a divertisement that represents Canada. But well, we saw Spain, Arabia, China, Russia. Didn't see Canada. I'm going to say false. Oh! All right. In what country was the first performance of the Nutcracker? The USA, Russia, Spain, or France? I remember this from one of the first slides we saw about the Nutcracker. Say Russia. Oh, oh, look at that cute bunny. Who is the composer of the ballet The Nutcracker? Marius Petipa, Peter Tchaikovsky, Mikhail Brishnikov, Alexander Dumas. I remember this from a slide. Tchaikovsky. Ooh, we got a power up if we need it. Double Jeopardy. Get double the points, but a wrong answer will cost you. Okay. Let's do double Jeopardy here. 
In what land does Clara experience dancing snowflakes? The battle scene, the land of sweets, the land of snow, the party scene. Snowflakes, land of snow. Who is this character in the Nutcracker? He's the uncle of the main character. Clara's uncle is that Herr Stellbaum, Drosselmeyer, Fritz, the Nutcracker. You remember the guy who made the Nutcrackers? Drosselmeyer. Mm. All right. The Nutcracker centers around what holiday? Thanksgiving, Christmas, Halloween, or Labor Day? The Nutcracker centers around, yep, Christmas. Who breaks Clara's Nutcracker during the party scene? Fritz, Drosselmeyer, the King Mouse, or Herr Stellbaum? Do you remember this? When Fritz was jealous, Clara's brother, and he pulled on it and it broke. Fritz! Ooh, power up. Eliminate one incorrect option. All right, we'll try that one. How many acts are in the full production? One, two, or three. Now, I think it was the party scene and then the land of snow and sweet scenes. I think there was two. Who is the antagonist? That's the bad guy. Who's the bad guy in the Nutcracker? The Nutcracker, the King Mouse, Drosselmeyer, or the Sugar Plum Fairy? The bad one was the King Mouse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How old is the ballet, the Nutcracker? Is it 10 years old, 25 years old? It's a premiere that's brand new or over 100 years old. If you remember, it's really old, right? Over a hundred years. Who does Clara's life-size nutcracker turn into? Does the nutcracker turn into Harry Stellbaum? Does the nutcracker turn into the prince? Does the nutcracker turn into the harlequin? Or does the nutcracker turn into Drosselmeyer? The nutcracker turns into the... Mm. Oh, another power up. Mm. <coughs> Immunity, get a second chance after a wrong answer. This would be a picture of the two child main characters in the Nutcracker. Who are they? Is this Clara and Fritz, Sugar Plum and Fritz, Sugar Plum and her Cavalier, Clara and Drosselmeyer, Clara and Fritz. Final answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True or false, the main character of the Nutcracker is the Sugar Plum Fairy. Mm, maybe? I thought the main character was Clara. So I'm going to say false. Traditionally, the Nutcracker takes place in Germany. I'm going to use our immunity here. I'm going to say false. Oh, I was wrong, but we get one more chance. True. Because we had immunity power up. This is fun, you guys. The divertisement in Act 2 of the Nutcracker represents different countries and different countries and colors, countries and kings, countries and time periods, countries and sweets. Well, it was the land of sweets. I'm going with sweets. Remember the chocolate and the candy canes and the marzipan. Ooh, power up. 
we get to eliminate one wrong answer. Cool. What does Clara throw at the mouse? Does she throw her nightgown, her slipper, or an ornament? Now, it depends on which version we looked at, but in one version, she did throw her slipper, if you remember that. Boom, boom, boom. Who is the leader of the Land of Sweets? Clara, the Sugar Plum Fairy, the Dewdrop Fairy, or the Snow Queen? I'm thinking Sugar Plum Fairy. What do you think? Should I? Oh, I wasn't sure on that one. All right, last question, friends. True or false, in Act 2 of the Nutcracker, there's a divertisement that represents Africa. Well, we saw Spain, Russia, China, Arabia. I don't remember seeing in Africa. Hey, we did good. Did you like that game? I look, really liked it. So what I'm Hey friends, this instrument is called a baritone or a euphonium. Now remember yesterday we talked about a trombone and we said a trombone is a brass instrument. This is a brass instrument, right? You can tell by the material it's made out of. And this has valves in it. And it's not a tuba. Tubas are bigger than baritones or euphoniums. And later on, you're going to see a giant, giant tuba. But this is a baritone, and it sounds like this. So I hold it like this. And I have a stuck valve here, and I'll show you that when I'm done here. And you hear that stuck valve? That's because this is stuck. So if you open these up, take this out, this is what's inside. That's called a valve. And the valve directs which way the air is flowing. Okay. And then there's a spring in the bottom in here. So when I push the valve down, it pops back up. Now this one needs to be oiled, so it might not be popping up the way it's supposed to. So I put it back in, and then I screw it back down. bit of a stick there but the do you get the idea so this is a baritone and these are the valves also these come out okay you can pull these out and you can pull these out and you can pull these out and they just slide in and out and if you slide them out the pitch will lower in the baritone because now the instrument's a little bit longer and if you push it in the pitch will raise a little bit because it's a little bit shorter and this down here when you're blowing through this remember yesterday in the trombone we said you had to be able to go <laughs> and then go <laughs> well there's going to be moisture that's coming out of your mouth right and then it's going to be going through the instrument so down here, these are called spit valves, okay? And when you open these up, you may get spit that comes out. Or you can open up one of these valves and you can empty your spit out of that too, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna show you is, a tuba is bigger than a baritone, but I'm gonna show you a giant tuba. I hope you like that.
here. Careful. What you do with a tuba like this? It's a conversation starter. It's something that you walk by and you say, wow, look at that giant tuba. Something to really get people into the store. The tuba has been with Carl Fisher since its origin in about 1900. First in the store in the Lower East Side, then in the store at Cooper Square, starting about 1926. Um, then we moved to 1999 to Bleecker Street. In 2013, we moved to the Financial District. Well, when I walked in and saw the tuba for the first time, I was speechless. I immediately wanted to play it. It kind of sounds like a jackhammer, like yeah. a block away. It's not playable like a regular tuba, where it can play a chromatic scale, but if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck, you can play fundamental tones on it. But I think that's the fundamental of the horn. You think? I think that's the fundamental. It is not a normal tuba. school. Okay, so what are we going to do here? Excuse me. All right. We are going to get on pianos. And I'm going to show you what I want you to do. So the first thing I want you to do, this is level one. Okay? Level one with no background. I want you to find two notes. So we want you to find... Oh, where are you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There you are. So we want you to find, no, that's not you. That's you, good. We want you to find a C and an A. Okay, so I'm gonna slide over here. So we want you to find a C and an A. So this is level one. So we go. All right, so get on a piano and see if you can find a C and an A. Ba ba bum, ba ba bum. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. And stop. All right, come on up here or get into a spot where you can see. So now we're going to go level two. Okay. Level two is we're going to do two notes for each. So here's going to be the first one. Now what we're going to do is we're always going to skip a note in the middle. So now we're going to go, instead of level one, we're going to go level two. Okay, we're hitting two notes. So level two C chord looks like that and then your level two A minor looks like this and isn't that interesting we're using this key twice we're using it once for this chord and once for this chord here's level two or this is level one level two All right, see if you can follow me with level two. We're gonna start in the C and go to the A. Okay, get on the piano. One, two, ready, go. All right, 
come on up here or get into a spot where you can see level one was this. Not that, Johnson. Level two was. All right, here's level three. We're going to make a three note chord for each one of those. So here's the C or the green, level one, level two, level three. Here's the A minor chord, level one, level two, level three. Okay? So try this. One, two, ready, go. Okay, come on and look over here. We're going to do the same thing again, C chord to A minor chord. Now, when you do this next one, it doesn't matter if you go level one or level two or level three. That does not matter, okay? So we're going to follow with this. This is called chord chord, and it's just going to go C twice, and then A twice, and C twice, and A twice. And you can see the chords up here, and you can hear it, right? And it doesn't matter if you go level one, level two, level three. That's up to you. But see if you can follow along. All right, here we go. I'm going to start it, and you just jump in when you're ready.
hopefully you, you were able to either uh, follow in level one or level two or level three. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a song on. It's going to be the same thing. And you can play it in level one, you can play it in level two, or you can play it in level three. Okay? And the chords are up here if you want to follow up there. It just goes the same pattern. Okay? So level one, or level two, or level three. Here we go. Stop the tape, and I'm going to see how we are set up for time. Sound good? All right, friends. 